So here's the first one. Okay, so I look at this, and the first thing I notice is 1 over the square root. And I'm thinking, oh, this is the derivative of the square root of something. And then that doesn't quite work out, because then I would need to have the derivative of what's inside the square root as a multiplicative factor, which would be x cubed. And I don't have it. I have x to the 7. Okay, so that doesn't work. The next thing that occurs to me is I'm looking at 1 over something. That makes me think log, but then that doesn't really work either because I have, so if I had log of something like this, I would have 1 over this, and then times the derivative of this, which would be another square root, and, and that's, just not, that's just not working right. Okay, so that doesn't work either. Maybe arctan will occur to me for a moment because I see 1 plus something squared, but under the square root, that's a non-starter. So none of these ideas work. So then I start thinking algebraic manipulation. Can this be simplified? Well, I don't think this can be simplified, so the next idea is that it should be unsimplified. Maybe this is the result of a simplification. And that's what's obscuring the structure. So maybe I can split something in such a way that that structure will once again be revealed. So what can I split here? I can split the power, right? So maybe I'm hoping to get x to the fourth somehow, because that's another element. So I'll split off x cubed. And then I immediately think, see that that works, because I have x cubed splitting off. That's the derivative of x to the fourth, so that's good. And then I have a bunch of x to the fourths left, right? Do you guys see that? There's one here, and then what's left of x to the seventh will be x to the fourth. So that, I think, is promising. So that I will actually do in one step. And doing things efficiently when you're integrating is very important, because an integration process is kind of like a narrative. And to a certain point, you want to take the express train. If there are some trivial spots, stops along the way, you want to skip them. Especially when it's something that you've practiced so much. For instance, if this was just x cubed, you would immediately know that it's the derivative of x to the fourth, and that a factor of four is missing, so there's a one quarter. Remember how we always do that adjustment factor? So my next step would be that one quarter. Okay? And then once again, I'm seeing that more algebraic work will be necessary. Okay, so we can do one of two things. We can either call this u, and this is the square root of u plus 1, and this is u. By the way, when you have done this a million times, feel free to skip this step back also and just keep writing x to the fourth in terms of u. It saves you two steps. If you're comfortable doing that, right? What's the difference, really, between calling something u and calling something x to the fourth, as long as you think of this as a single symbol? Is this really so much shorter than this? So much easier to write? I don't think so. So the whole point of this exercise is to just, of this approach, is to just learn, is to learn to think of this it's just another symbol. And that saves you the substitution step and then the anti-substitution step. That's kind of the point here. So I do this just because it makes the narrative a little bit easier to, do, to deliver. But in my private life, I would really just keep going with this and just treat x to the fourth as a single symbol. You guys are with me on that? OK, so what do we do here? You know our standard trick? Add one and subtract one, because right now there is nothing you can do here. It has to be simplified. If it was just one over the square root, then you're okay. If you had u plus one on top and it's simplified to be the square root, that's okay. But here you can't do anything. So you have to manipulate it algebraically. 
and our standard manipulation is to add and subtract 1. The rest is easy. This is where we have to now switch to a fractional power. This is u plus 1 to the 1 half. So it all comes from equals, let's be careful here, 1 quarter. Right? So 1 quarter, I'm not thinking about too much right now. It's just hanging out outside the whole thing. So I keep track of it, but it doesn't factor into my thinking right now. So this, as we know, comes from u plus 1 to the 3 halves. And then I have to make up for it with 2 thirds, our standard way of doing it. And this is just square root of u plus 1, but missing the 2. So once again, I mentally put the 2 in here so it's the perfect derivative of the square root of u plus 1 and make up for it as a multiplicative factor here. So in the final step, I have to undo my substitution, which is a step I wouldn't have if I stuck with x to the fourth as a symbol. Keep that in mind. And I'll also simplify this. So this is 1 6. Very nice. And I'll just mention, let's not work it all the way through, but let's just mention that the alternative way to go about this would have been to denote, as we talked about before, to throw in x to throw in the plus 1, because we always can, and call this u. In which case, this becomes which is a little bit better because we no longer have to do our trick with plus 1 and minus 1. This can just be simple, split up directly. Saves you one step. But then you have to remember to plug back in x to the fourth plus 1.